we're into seven weeks, 15 invaluable laws of growth. You may notice that uh, a person's missing. Let me put his information up. He had a conflict in schedule today. If you don't know Danielle Smith, here's his information, daniellesmith.com. That's his blog. He's a John Maxwell certified coach. He's been my coach since 2011. And uh, he's usually on here with me so I can bounce some stuff up on, but I think I'm well prepared for today. We'll get through this. Um, if there's comments, I'll look and see if I, they pop up. I'll try to address them for you. Okay, so today we're going to talk about the law of design. I'm going to be frank with you. First time I saw this, first time Danny introduced me to this through my coaching, I didn't know what the heck it meant. I mean, what what is a law of design? Well, I think by the time I go through these notes with you today, you're going to have a pretty good idea of what it is and even to begin how to start thinking into this law. All right, well, let's jump in. To maximize growth, you have to develop strategies. If you design your own life plan, if you don't, the chances are you will fall into somebody else's plan. I didn't really understand the value of that statement until I started digging into it and realized that so much of our lives are done on the fly. Uh, if you go back to the very first law, the law of interconnectivity, right? We, we function in life. We're always doing stuff in life, but we don't think about growth and we don't develop those strategies. And conversely, we end up living our lives through other people's identities, whatever that may be we don't form our own growth plan, all right? So this is what this law of design is gonna be about today. So bear with me as I read some more stuff. And by the way, it's a casual show, I have notes. Um, I remember stuff fairly well, but it's nice to have notes when you're when you're doing something live. And by the way, uh, most of the people come back and, and see this, see it on demand on the channel, just so you know. So. Glancing backwards helps to plan forward. Um, we never want to live in the past. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't do any good. It's better to live in the present, right? Uh, right now, this moment, what I'm doing right now is the most important place I can be in life because I don't know what the future is and I don't know and I can't live what happened 10 minutes ago, right? But learning how to look at the past can help plan a forward movement, all right? So life lessons, don't allow you, don't allow life simply to happen. You have to be proactive and you have to be strategic. In other words, I know a lot of, uh, I, I would say that many folks can't speak for you, but maybe in my case, right? You don't want life to simply happen for growth. Remember, we're talking about growth through these laws, right? So you have to be pro proactive and you have to have a strategy. It has to be strategic. And we'll get into those here in a minute. Now, this kind of struck me when I was going through the book, um, and that is life is simple. But keeping it that way is difficult. Think about that. Life could be simple, should be simple, but we get in our own way and we make things difficult. So the hurtism out of this is, is that when you're making your strategies to keep them moving forward, but to make them uh, as simple in their simplicity as possible. So that it keeps life simple. Designing your life is more important than designing your career. A little backwards, right? I mean, think about that. We, all we do is think about our careers. 
And when we talk about what we do, we talk about our careers. But when you're thinking about personal growth or growth, designing your life is more important. And I think John T. Maxwell in the book even expresses that a lot of times when we do this correctly, it takes care of the rest. And I think we go through discovery stages too, right through this stage, because then we learn, um, then we learn how to really find out what we're capable of doing, what we really like to do. Uh, instead of just picking a career, we have a chance to discover who we are and what we really like to do and, and, what, and what we could possibly uh, potentially do besides just thinking we need to focus on just a career. So what happens to do that? Well, first, you got to know who you are, right? And life, and I love this quote, life is not a dress rehearsal. You get to go around the moon one time, right? It's a, it's a one pony show. Uh, you're here today, and you're gone tomorrow. And uh, in between is your life. And how we decide we're going to grow our life uh, becomes more important than anything we can do. Amazing. Uh, if you catch on to that concept and... I would even write that on three by five card. It'll change how you think about yourself, right? Page three, Paul Harvey used to say. There's areas of regret, right? So and part of that is when we ask these questions to ourselves or when we make these statements, we're not putting these in a negative way to change our thinking or make us look at ourselves negatively, I guess is what I'm trying to say, but you have to look at these things. And remember I told you on the very first thing is to look backwards at the past so you can move forward. So think at it in terms like this. So these are like a survey John did in his book. And these were some of the top ones. Okay. May, may or may not apply to you. I wish they had taken better care of my health. I wish they had managed my money better. I wish I'd spent more time with my family. I wish I'd worked on my personal development to really get to know myself and my personal growth. My problem here is number five. I wish I had more fun. I need to work on that. And when I read that again, I went, darn it, I really need to work on that. Plan my career better. But remember, personal growth is more important than planning your career, but both go hand in hand. So keep that in mind. Would have given back more. In other words, been more proactive reaching outside of ourselves. Um, we get caught up in the trap of me. Planning your life, everything, multiply it by two. Well, so if you believe the philosophy that plans are made in sand, and you realize that when you're planning something that it may not exactly go right, then in this book, John Maxwell kind of says, once you multiply it times two. In the example, he said, so if you plan on trying to raise $1,000, why don't you think about raising two? If you've got something planned to do in one month, why don't you give it two months? If you're going to plan to start something new in the next six months, why don't you build a plan for 12 months? In other words, multiply your planning by two and realize that most plans are made in sand, that they're, they're not going to always go according to what you think they are. So give yourself room. And it goes back to the idea that a lot of times things do take longer than we expect. And so on your little three by five card, if you're taking notes or if you're going to start a journal on this, whenever you plan, put it X times or X times two. Strategies depend on a system. And it says develop your systems. 
Now, there's some great books I'm going to recommend right here. I'll put them in the description on YouTube when this is over, and I'll put links to them. The Compound Effect is a must for you to go pick up. And uh, Atomic Habits. If you really want to put two books together that say similar things but give you different ways to think into your plan and strategy, those are great books. And uh, realize that when we plan a system, it may not be excitable. It may be kind of mundane and boring, but it's part of creating the habit to get there. So, and I think I even put in here some samples. So let's see what I wrote down to myself the other day. So my questions were to Danny when I was going through the coaching with him was, how many systems does one need? And the answer was, for every strategy, you need a system. And part of that design has to become a way of life. And this is where I refer you back to atomic habits. So when you're designing your system or strategy, it has to become an automatic part of your life. And the book Atomic Habits and even the compound effect will help you understand that we have to fail fast, go through our mistakes, plan in advance, give ourselves times to right? But it has to become a part of our life for growth. Here's a quote from Michael Gerber. Systems permit ordinary people to achieve extraordinary results. So if that's the truth, and I think it is, then if we really learn how to design the systems as part of our plan, part of our design, then the quote basically says, if we do it, we do that right. That's when you start to see extraordinary results through action. Think about some of the people around you that you know are living in. All right. So here's how we create a system. And this is probably the, the one we're going to spend a little bit of time on. By the way, I only stay on for about 20, 25 minutes. So we're at the 15 minute mark. So we'll get through this and let y'all think into this a little bit and get it up for archive and on demand for those other folks. But how to create a system. Effective systems take the big picture into account. I call it the helicopter view up at uh, 10,000 feet looking down to kind of give you a visual of understanding big picture thought, not this narrow channel where you feel like you have tunnel vision, but you're looking around everything. So it's about the big picture. Effective systems make use of priorities. So if you don't know the priorities, then you're not gonna have an effective system. So you need to sit down and decide what's a priority, what do I want to design these systems around this growth? And so you just have to prioritize things. And I'm not talking about urgent versus non-urgent. I'm really actually talking about, do you want to prioritize your faith? Do you want to prior prioritize your business? Do you want to change something and move out of a business into another one, things like that. So write down your priorities, get them in order, and then start effectively creating systems through those priorities. They include measurement. By the way, I'm in the measurement business, right? So because I work with people in the, in the uh, online marketing arena, measurement's part of what we have to look at 
Well, the same thing applies to your growth. How do you measure your personal or business or growth, period? And that is you have to keep up with what's going on. You have to look at how effective your plans are and you have to go through each and every single step and make sure that your measurements add up to what you're trying to accomplish, right? Remember I told you fail fast? You'll find out really quick in that measurement thing if failing fast is good. And by the way, we've always talked about failing fast as being a good thing because it gets you to the end result quick. Include uh, application. Wow, I'm going to single that up in one word. Action, 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 action. If we have action on uh, these systems, and once we have the effective system, right, once we've set the priorities, once we've started to look at the measurement, then we can start looking at the actions. And they always have actions. Everything has action. You're either moving, you're either not moving or moving, but it's an action, right? All right, and and a good system includes organization. When you're not organized, you know it, and it drives you crazy. Or maybe it doesn't. But I love being organized. It's one of my strong points in that I keep everything super organized, right? And uh so that one's not a problem for me, but it me, but it is a benchmark for knowing that I'm applying the system, and that's a good thing. And by the way, they're consistent. A good, effective system for growth in design is that it is consistent, and that's a good measurement for how you're doing. All right, so I've got some final thoughts. The big picture, the measurement, the application, the organization being consistent as we talked about. We'll see you next week. And next week will be really deep because we're going to talk about the law of pain. Y'all have a great day.